Here's an Arvin Model 640T. This is a four tube midget radio from around 1954. It's one of the later models that uses miniature tubes. This set does not have an IF amplifier stage, just a, just a mixer stage, detector first audio stage, output stage, and rectifier tube. I've already metered all of the RF and IF coils for continuity to make sure they were okay. And since they're okay, we can now proceed with the recap. And I've actually already started that. Here's the capacitor off the center of the volume control, and here's the replacement. You can see the size difference. And by the way, here's the metal case that the radio was housed in, complete with a dirt dauber nest. I picked this up for a couple of dollars about two years ago at that antique alley yard sale that they have every year. In fact, that sale's going on right now. It extends from my hometown in Meridian, Mississippi, all the way up to Bristol, Virginia. And I was really looking forward to going this year, but it seems like when you have plans made for something, something is going to throw a curveball in the works to screw up the whole thing. My friend that I was planning on going with tomorrow, he ended up having a heart attack and had to be put in the hospital. I'm just thankful to God that he was able to make it to the hospital before something really bad happened and hope for a speedy recovery. He was having chest pains last weekend and ignored it, despite everybody telling him he needed to go to the emergency room. And I think it hit him big time Thursday. So that's just a lesson for all of us. If we start feeling funny or anything that we might think is a heart attack, better to go have it checked out and be told that it's something else than not have it checked out and the big one really hits you and take you out of here. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be going to the antique alley sale this year, but it's more important that my friend recovers. But anyway, on to the recap of this radio. Since all the calls appear to be good, I think this will be just a routine restoration, or at least I hope so. I don't know, it seems like some of the sets that I think will be routine are the ones that turn into be a real dog, but hopefully that won't be the case here. We now have all the capacitors replaced, along with the power cord and a new antenna, and I found a 12BE6 tube to replace the missing one here, but there's one thing we need to address before we power this up. My keen sense of hearing tells me that we have capacitor plates rubbing together on the tuning condenser, and that will need to be corrected. The way we do that is usually run a heavy piece of paper or cardboard or whatever in between each plate and try to straighten out the plates that way. It can be very tedious and time consuming, but that's about the only way I know to do this. I found the bent plate. Fortunately, it was this one here on the very end, just bent slightly over enough to where it was touching. And then I discovered another first in my 20-something years of doing this. I performed a continuity check across the AC line to see if the filament string had continuity, and there was none. So I said, well, either the switch is bad or, or we have an open tube filament. Well, the switch was okay and we had not one open tube filament we had three open tube filaments now remember this 12BE6 was originally missing in these other three tubes the 12AV6 the 50C5 and the 35W4 each and every one of them had an open filament now I don't know what might have caused that maybe this radio got struck by lightning or somebody plugged it into 240 volts yes I have known of that to happen before but that's a story for another day I didn't do it though by the way but anyway we now have continuity across our AC power cord which tells us our filament circuits good so we are going to plug it into the variac and run the smoke test on it well we're back in business almost now it appears the volume control is bad I actually have it all the way down and not a whole lot of change across the rotation. You can 
have to try to find another volume control. Okay, so now we'll look into the volume control issue. Well, it looks like the original volume control was defective. The original was a 2 mega ohm control. I was lucky enough to find a 1 mega ohm control with the exact same shaft and mounting, and it seems to be working just fine, so we're going to leave it at that. You can detect a little audio with it all the way down, but not enough to really matter. Okay, let it play a while and make sure it doesn't develop any new problems. And we'll clean it up and put it yeah, back together and it'll be ready to go. Here's the underside of the chassis showing the completed repairs, the capacitor replacement, power cord replacement, and volume control and off on switch replacement. I got a little sloppy right here with this power switch because that's actually going to be a temporary connection. Eventually I'm going to replace this power cord with a polarized cord and I'm going to rewire the switch into the hot side of the AC line. I'm also going to replace this across the line capacitor with an appropriate safety capacitor. The reason that didn't get done today is because I don't have any parts to do it with. So I've got to order some caps and I've Got to go raid the dumpster for some modern Chinese electronics to whack the power cords off of. But, you know, it's, you know, the radio is going to stay with me, so I know how to be careful with it, so, you know, no real hurry to do that. If I were to let it go to someone else, I would get in more of a hurry to make those safety modifications. Even still, this standard film capacitor is an upgrade over the original paper capacitor that was connected across the AC power line. And here's the cabinet. I cleaned it up as best I could. It's got some rust spots on it, but it looks a lot better than it did. Maybe one day I'll get around to repainting it. And I misspoke at the beginning of this video. I believe I said this was a model 640T. Well, it's actually a model 840T. And the schematic it's dated 1955, so this set was probably made in 54. And it was probably one of the last Arvin Metal 4 tube midget radios. I don't recall any reference to any made any later than that. As you can see, it's a 4 tube set. We have our converter stage, which is transformer coupled directly to the detector and first audio stage, so there's no IF amplifier stage. And then our first audio stage is coupled to the power output stage. And here's our rectifier tube, which supplies the DC operating voltages for the set. Now, since this radio has no IF stage, it's not the best performer. It does okay on local stations with a good antenna, but, but don't expect to receive many distance stations on one of these sets. But, like I think I said earlier, these sets do pretty good for what they are. And I've did a little minor clean up on the top side of the chassis. Nothing major, but it looks a lot better than it did. Now, you're not going to believe what happened. I thought we were all good to go. Put it all back in the cabinet. 
turned it on, dead as a doornail. No tube filaments, no nothing. Opened it back up, and guess what? The new power switch that I just replaced is wide open. And I don't have another control like this, so for the time being, I have the off-on switch jumpered. And when I want to turn it off, I'll unplug it. It's amazing how crap like that can happen. Here we are all back together, teamed in to WWL out of New Orleans. Not too bad, considering this is a cheap, low-end radio. And we're using a, just a piece of wire running out of my shop window for an antenna. And did you know... And then they're going to go out and have a good time tonight. They're going to eat foods that are horrible for themselves, drink too much, smoke too much. There's WDIA out of Memphis coming in very weakly. Back standing. Aoki has swiped six bases, but he isn't away. In the 2 0. And it's high, three balls and no strikes. You know, there is. Um or more of their life savings. The European bank rate in Cyprus reveals that social democratic... And there you go, my 1954 Arvin 4T metal midget tube radio. All repaired and ready to go. All I have to do is fix the all-phone switch, but they had a new set of capacitors, a volume control, a new set of tubes, and we're good to go. Okay, thanks for watching, and more to come later.